My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 as we continue our Let's Play series centred around Coventry, the station we're sat at at the moment, on our modded free play game. In this episode I've got a few plans in mind, one of them being addressing the overcrowding situation that we have on our main line and our northern main line as well. Another thing I'd like to get done is start supplying Derby and Macclesfield over on the west hand side of the map with the bread that they require to stimulate some city growth. And I'd also like to try something a little bit different, something quite similar to what I tried over by Morley with the cargo interchange. However this time I want to utilise a ferry port in the process as well. And uh, to show you what I mean by that, I want to give you a rough idea. Let's go ahead and make a start and I'll show you that first of all. I don't think I'll build it straight away however, but I will just talk through my thought process. Now, Derby requires food and bricks, Macclesfield requires food and fuel, Ulverston requires tools and bricks. Now the plan I had in mind was somewhere around here, just after this junction perhaps, is to have a branch line that breaks off heads up in towards the hills there. It will be quite steep and a bit of a climb but there's no nothing we can really do about that unfortunately. Carry it on over here and then somewhere around a large body of water just outside of Haywood is have a cargo station that's connected directly to a freight station uh, a freight harbour I should say with one over the other side of the river and the individual goods the tools, the bricks and the fuel can be shipped over by a cargo ship, unloaded on this side of the river and then taken off to the various towns to be consumed and to help stimulate some growth over there. Not sure how viable or profitable it'll be but it's just an idea I had and something I wanted to try. We have enough money that if it's not the most commercially successful venture we've ever done it shouldn't cause the whole thing to crawl to a halt and bankrupt the company. However, before we get started with that, we first need to address these trains here because as we can see the Coventry main line and the Northern main line, they're both still very, very busy services to such an extent where I don't think passengers waiting on platform are able to board the trains. So the simple solution I'm going to do first of all is we'll go to the Coventry main line, edit the trains, at the minute they have a 100 capacity, I'm going to increase that by another, another 40, so that's two further passenger wagons per train, like so. Obviously this will decrease the speed somewhat, but having that extra 40 passenger capacity per train should help alleviate some of the waiting times we are currently seeing on this line. And then if we go to the northern main line and do the same here, so if we just go ahead, what cat, what uh, are they running? Yeah, are they are running the six axle. Okay, it was difficult to identify it correctly because of the bright pink colour that they have, but they are the six axles. So that's okay. So modify those as well. So that's the main line and the northern main line now both increased in capacity. What I'm also going to do is add another two trains onto the northern main line because it's a very busy service and it's proven quite profitable. So may as well maximize it for all we can. So that's one of the first little things I wanted to take care of. Now let's turn our attention to the main focus of the episode which is going to be getting this line up here over to the riverbank up here and see about how we can sort out some ferry transportation for our various goods that have been required over the river. So we just leave a bit of gap between the junction there so there's no no dramas being caused by trains crossing and waiting and what have you and then if we just just adjust this slightly because we want a nice clean sort of uh, a nice clean junction with very little overlap just like that and that's still got a decent speed as well which is also important now as I said, taking this line up here is going to be quite difficult because of the steep gradient that we've got to deal with, but unfortunately there's no two ways about that. 
it is quite a steep hillside there. However, our trains are becoming more and more powerful as the as the date ticks on by. So handling this sort of gradient, while not ideal, it certainly won't be make or break for the trains as it would have been in our not too distant past. So let's see how we can navigate this here. Oh no, I've lost it there. Let's just take, yeah, here we go. I want to try and get an, a decent enough looking crossover here. Obviously, <laughs> don't want that, that's just going to be a, a, a driving hazard. How does that look? That's not too bad. Doesn't mess the road up that much either, although this is just a a little like, extra road that we put in for convenience it's not really something we're using I don't believe but as we can see the uh, the people of the cities are using it themselves which is fine that's what we built it for okay now where are we headed I think if we aim for that way and bypass Gillingham and Gillingham station on our left that's quite excessive but again, oh, that is very steep right there, isn't it? We might have to have a sharp bend just here then. Just to avoid the worst of this slope here. Like that. I mean, it can soon pick up the speed once again after the sharp bend. Could have planned it out a little better here, but... Oh, yeah, I might have to wait. Yeah, I'll redo that bit because that just looks ever so slightly ridiculous. Let's be honest, it looks crazy. Let's just take it all back, do it all again. Okay, let's get the track tool. How will that look? Again, it's not too bad in terms of the level crossing, so that's fine. Yeah, we could smooth that off. In fact, we'll just do it very quickly while we're here. There we go. Take the worst of it off just there. Look, that's that's okay-ish. It's not the best, but it does mean we're not pointing straight down here. We don't have to have that extreme curve to avoid this slope. So let's just continue this track as best we can while tackling this gradient here, which isn't conducive for train lines at all. Again don't really want to have a crazy looking viaduct like that so let's hug the mountain a little further what do we have here we have the 282 Mikado the Mac AC flatbed and tarpaulin truck so we can have a look at them momentarily but I'm not sure if we'd if we have cause to use them but we can check them out so let's just focus on this for the time being before we get too distracted by the new trains and the new Vehicles, we can look at them once we've got these lines set up. Okay, getting closer now. We do have a this is the northern, sorry, this is the, the Stockton and the Boston shuttle line. So, if we can avoid interacting with that as much as possible, i.e., let's try and get a bridge over that, that's that's okay. We take it back just a little bit, just like that, so it bridges the road as well, that's okay. And then we can start heading downwards straight away, and we'll revert to an embankment rather than an overly long bridge. And we can just do a bit of terraforming afterwards just to take the slopiness out of it as much as we can. Okay, so we want to head towards Haywood, so if we aim for this iron mine over here, so if we head, I'm trying to think the best way to do this, come this way a little, perhaps not so much as that though, and then swing round and hopefully we should be high enough that we get a bridge over this passenger line, yes we do, yeah that looks quite quite pleasant actually, I'm quite, quite pleased with that, however, want to take it back just a little and have more of an embankment before we hit the bridge so if we go back to say there that should be okay 
It is quite a steep embankment, but needs must. And how does that look now? Still looks pretty good. Just watch one of our mainline trains, our newly extended mainline trains, head on its way there towards Gillingham. Yeah, that'll do. We'll take that. It could be better, but it also could be a lot worse. And it does get us over the passenger line without any interaction. So the trains won't be waiting on each other there, which is always good. Okay, let's continue onwards. Is this a... No, this is just a road. So I don't mind having a level crossing over the road. It doesn't have to be a bridge at this point, so that's okay. We can slope him straight down and straight over. Like so. Yes. It does cause a dip in the road somewhat, but it's not too bad. Yep, happy enough with that. I could live with that. Okay, so now we want to decide where we want to put this cargo interchange. And I think just that you don't want it level with Haywood because any expansion that Haywood may see in the future will be stymied if we have a large uh, freight yard just outside. So we've put them around about here, like that. Yes, where's our line? Yes, we can easily bring him in there without being too drastic on the curve. So, if we just go straight in, what does that do? It does tunnels and bridges. Perhaps if we just do it piece by piece, then that might be a better idea. We'll keep the bridge. That's quite, yeah, that's okay. And we're keeping a decent speed all throughout that at 75, which is ideal. And then we just need to quickly finish this off with a bit of dual track all the way into the new station. And then get the diamond and some blocking set up. And then we could start thinking about how we're going to organise our platforms over here. Now we're going to have several platforms here, I can guarantee it. So we want an early diamond, so we've got room for lines to branch off to extra platforms at this cargo hub. But for now, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and get the signals put in, shall we? And put quite a bit of blocking in. It is quite a long track, so we can leave decent enough spaces between our signals. While still giving us plenty of individual blocks along this line. So we can run multiple trains. Because I imagine we're going to have around about two trains for each cargo item that's being delivered. So for example we'd have two, uh, two trains delivering tools, two delivering the bricks. And for the fuel we could just drop it off with a ship straight away. There's no point dropping it over here, put it on a train to put it back on a ship. Because as you remember, our fuel production is all being handled entirely by ship anyway. So that's just, that'll just take a slight modification, but nothing too drastic. Okay, we want a couple of short clearing signals just to keep things flowing on this junction as best we can. And I think that will pretty much do us. Let's name this to Haywood Cargo Exchange. We are going to need a harbour in this area as well. Otherwise the whole thing won't work. Put it the right way around, it'll be a brilliant start. And I think we go for two, yes, we'll go for two large terminals to start with. We could always add more in later. And then we need to make sure these are properly connected up so the goods can transfer between the two drop-offs. That looks nasty so don't do it that way. So bring this here. That's just as bad. This is a nightmare to do. Oh! There we go. So it is quite elevated, but that's okay. We could 
No, no, that's not a curved road. Give me a curved road, please. You're not, you don't want to give me a curvy road, do you? There we go. This might look silly, but... As long as it provides a joint connection between the two, that's the main thing. This road building tool is not playing ball today at all. Out the, uh, the less said about that, the better. And we'll call this Haywood Cargo Exchange Harbour. Because it's all part of the Cargo Exchange. Now we're also going to need a harbour over this side of the river as well. So let's go ahead and get that set up immediately while we're in the area. How far back can we set? Just there. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Just quickly connect it up as per standard. Spend so much time trying to get a nice road connection. I must waste hours of my life doing that. But there we go. And oh my god, that is shit. That is absolutely horrendous. Oh god. Haywood Harbour West. We'll keep the West. So basically it's going to be a short shuttle service, but using ships across there, ferrying the trade goods over to this island, so we can get them dropped off into Derby, Macclesfield and Ulverston. Now, to facilitate this, we are going to need a truck station. I'm just going to go big, go big straight off the bat. Can we put this anywhere without it demolishing half the fields? We can put it up there, but then it won't have a connection to the farm, which is... Oh, there we go. That'll do. It's a bit... There, yes. Now, the reason I wanted a connection to the farm is because obviously we want to get the grain from this farm up to the food factory by Derby as well. And it makes sense just to use the one truck station rather than having multiple truck stations all in the same area. So that's why I've done it that way. You'll see what I mean in a few moments if it doesn't make sense at the moment. We'll just call this Haywood Farms. Okay, so that's phase one, two, three done. While we are here, as I said, one of the things I want to do as well in this episode is start producing grain and food and delivering it into Derby and Macclesfield. So because we're here right now, we may as well make a start and to get the grain into Derby we are going to need a road through these mountains and we'll try and keep it so it looks like it's following the lay of the land rather than just ploughing straight up and through kind of like that's trying to do there okay this is we're gonna have a tunnel through this mountain here but that's okay I mean you can't really have a mountain road about a few tunnels so and then we'll I don't want to have it too excessive on the tunnels looks like I've got no real choice here see I don't like doing that I like keeping it a bit more natural a bit more scenic and that's just it's almost like easy option there when you just plow straight through yeah it's more efficient and all that but I like the I like you know following the contours and what have you but hey ho short of reworking the entire road there's not much you can do about it now and eh, yeah it'll do it'll do anyway over here we're going to need a truck station as well we don't need this many platforms but I'm just going to put that many on because I couldn't be bothered to change them basically we are going to need a few one for dropping off the, the grain and then obviously one to pick up the food for Derby and another one to pick up the food for Macclesfield so we do need at least three but you know overkill and all that we have gone for six because why wouldn't you Anyway, let's just continue on with this road here. That's a nice simple connection into there. And this is Derby Food. We'll call it Food Factories. A lot shorter than Food Processing Plant. So that's that. Vehicles, yes, we need some of you. We'll put our road depot down here at the whole interchange thing we have going on. 
like that. It's off center, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be symmetrical and right angles all the time. We need an unload point in Derby as well. Where's the best place to put it? See, if we put it there, it's going to interfere with our buses. Perhaps if we put it down here. Just say, like, there. And then at the same time, if we can upgrade this road here without demolishing too many buildings. Oh, we've got a collision, I guess. Oh, no, that's the bus stop that's colliding because it's making the junction wider. That's a shame. Do you know what? They can keep it as a small back street. Rather than re removing everything on their map, we'll just do it that way. So this is food delivery. So let's get it all set up as per normal. Have I got the right colour? Yes, I believe so. Let's get the, following the usual naming system. It's well established by now, so that's food delivery Derby. We'll get the vehicles waiting. They're not going to do anything for a while, but that's okay. While we're here, let's have a look at these max. Uh, they are 19 miles an hour, carrying 8. The Benzes are 25, carrying 7. We'll stick with the Benzes, I think. There's not much in it. We do want to set them to higher maintenance, though, because they are going to the city. There we go. And in fact, we may as well set up the food line, sorry, the, the grain haulage line as well while we are here. At least then this will start stimulating some production. There we go. And this is grain haulage. And this is Haywood to Derby. Now, how many do we want running the grain up here? I'm going to say quite a few. In fact, I'm going to say 50. There we go. That'll give us a decent regular stream of grain into the, into the food factory. So it's well worth spending the extra money there. And here they come. That should have still... Oh, it's not close enough. Just... Okay, let's quickly pause it. And if we cheekily... Can we put an access point? No. Oh, what we can do... Yes, we can. Will that now connect? Yes. There we go. Bit of quick thinking saves the day. It's not often I'm known for quick thinking, but there are occasions. You're welcome. And as we see, our first items of grain are awaiting shipment. Just in time for the arrival of our trucks. Meanwhile, we need to... Okay, no, first of all, we need to decide what of the goods we're going to ship over first. I'm going to say... Bricks. Now, where are we going to get our... Oh, we could... Hmm. Well, we didn't need the train line for the bricks, did we, really? Because the bricks can be shipped by uh, ferry as well. So let's, in fact, do that. So this line that we just started to do, if we, where's our brick product, there it is. If you go from, oh we're going to need a, yes we're going to need another terminal here now. So let's go ahead and get a large dock out like that. And we'll put a third one, I don't think we're going to need all three but it just makes it look symmetrical which is always nice so anyway as I was saying yes this line if you go from Morley Brickworks port and what platform are you taking number one go for number three load up with bricks please be fully loaded as per and then this is a long sailing journey for you, sir. You're coming all the way up here to Haywood Harbour West where you're unloading the bricks. And you're not loading anything. I don't want you to steal anything on the platform and bring it back with you. I don't think you would, but you never know. Bricks shipping Morley to Haywood. There we go. Where is our shipyard? It's outside Coventry, yes. So large car, oh, get large. 
got to be that one. It's slightly bigger and faster. We're going to need a few on this one. I'm going to say six straight off the bat for just under seven million. Get them coloured. Make sure they're onto the Haywood line, and they are. And then we're going to need an unload point for the bricks in Derby, and we'll put it up that end so it's out of the way. New line there to there, click the right one, excellent. And you are only taking the bricks and nothing else. Excellent. Colour him red. Get him named up properly. There we go. And then if we get some vehicles waiting to go, obviously they're not going to be used for a while. It's going to take a while for the ships to turn up with the bricks, but that's okay. Uh, we'll go for ten. No, just five. Because I don't want them blocking anything else up while they're waiting for the ships to arrive. That's my concern there. So you go to there. In fact, what if I change your platform to number one? Then you've got more space to queue without tripping up the other waiting vehicles. There we go, yes. Okay, some of our bricks ones are now emerging as well, which is good to see. Okay, so that's two birds with one stone almost. Yes, we've not done all the, the goods. We need to do the fuel and bricks this way, as well as tools up here. And we've built this, which is not going to be used for a while. The only time we are going to need to use it, I think is for the tools to Ulverston and that's not urgent so all this track lane that we did it's not been a waste of time but it's not going to be used immediately which is unfortunate but at least it's there and it's you know it's ready to go now isn't it you know when we do decide to start getting the tools brought up we can just get straight on it we don't have to worry about setting anything up it's all good to go Let's just have a look here. Wow. Let's these trains are gonna need addressing because they are not keeping up, not even close. So let's go ahead and ooh. Do you want to have a Mercado? Do you know what? I think we will, just so you're on their network somewhere. What you are using the clear story, so no wonder you're struggling because you've got small capacity still. Let's go. Let's go for the six axle and we'll upgrade it to 80. So that's almost doubling the passenger capacity on these trains. And we'll see what sort of impact that has. Is it the same story here? No, Gillingham Boston isn't as popular. Clearly that's because Stockton has received one of its goods, the bricks. Boston hasn't received anything. Let's check how the overcrowding is doing at our stations now. We've adjusted the mainline trains. Doesn't seem to have had much of an impact. That's unfortunate. But there's our newly upgraded. In fact, let's just hop on him for a while because we've not seen the Mercado yet and it's a perfect chance to see it when we sat at station. In fact, if we get down onto the almost like we're on the platform there. Oh, we've jumped. Let's jump back over to the other side. That's quite nice, that. It's not a bad view, is it? See what they see. It must, I must say, it looks quite impressive. A very uh, beastly looking sort of train there. And he'll happily chug along for us. Okay, so we've got a bit of traffic build up here. We have two trains waiting. Oh, he's waiting for him to clear off, isn't he? Okay. But he should take almost a full load there. Near enough, I think, yeah. 
So the extra capacity is certainly helping there. What about on the main line itself? Yep, we're full. Are all the trains full? Near enough. So increasing the capacity was well worth doing. It's made a difference already. Now, do we need to sort this out? This waiting around here? Or do we just accept that it's a part of life? It may be that it's just a part of life, unfortunately. That's the Gillingham to Derby shuttle. How many did we have? We had three, didn't we? I don't like the fact we've got two so close together. In fact, all three are right on top of each other, in essence. We've got one on platform, one waiting, and one at the junction just back there. It'd be better if they were a little better, uh, better spaced out, but... Ah, well, it is what it is, I suppose. Let's head down to Coventry and see how we're looking in Coventry. Okay, that's had an impact there. Those numbers are a lot smaller. However, Bridgewater, we still have a lot waiting to head towards Coventry. Yeah, primarily Coventry and Bridport. I guess at the minute, all our main line... Oh, no, we have one on the way. I was just going to say, perhaps all our mainline trains are up at the northern end of the map, but we have one on his way in now. So that'll clear, well, at least 140 of those. Why they don't use the bus service rather than waiting around for the train, I don't know. Oh no, we've got a few on there, look. Oh no, that's bus service number two. Where's our, inter oh, there's the intercity bus. Hey, there's, a, there's what three how many buses do we have just the four we only have eight people on there I'm gonna go ahead and actually swap these out for the max oh no the Gegenhaus are the faster ones okay now we'll keep them as they are then okay did our mainline train arrive yet no it's just there so we'll come back to that in a moment have any of our ships, our new ships, arrived down here? I'm going to guess not. No, they were all Klondikes, I think. And they're all the Vandal. What do we have here? The Peter Witt Streetcar. Let's have a look at that. Just while waiting for things to start kicking in. Manage vehicles. What do you have at the moment? You have the CE22. So it's inferior in pretty much every measurable metric. So unfortunately, Mr. Peter Witt, your trams are not going to be utilised, I don't think. I must say Coventry has grown quite substantially, which is good. Oh look, there's our headquarters, I'd forgotten about that. 38 companies go, what's that based upon? Eight points for value, four points for having ten trains, and all the rest. £443 million pounds worth is our company. Not too shabby at all. Okay, Bridport has grown also quite substantially, which is good to see. Our northern mainline is not a very profitable service at the moment is it you'd think with the hundreds of people waiting to use it it would be but hey ho maybe one day just quickly head back down to Chillingham here so that's this Gillingham Stockton shuttle that we just amended he they are both full which is good so hopefully that started to have an impact up here Yes, although I do believe we could do with more trains on that, operating that service. Perhaps another one should do. Let's clone one of them. Let's see what sort of impact that has. Don't think we're going to need much more than that, to be honest. Just, uh, just three should be enough. Boston is doing what it's doing okay for now. Uh, 
that's not really going to change until we start getting the goods and the fuel up here, which may not be for a short while just yet. As it stands, I'm focusing on these towns over here for the time being, especially Derby, which, by the looks of it, is now starting to see some food being delivered. Yes, we've had some drop-offs, which is excellent. How are we doing? 16 of 93 per year. So we do need more, but that's okay. I'm guessing here we're oversaturated in terms of trucks. So let's sell a few. I probably already did it with 50, let's be honest. I think we could have probably got away with just 40, so I'll sell around about 10 of them. Maybe just two more. Like... I'll just keep going. One more. One more. There we go. So you're producing 400, but only 200 being shipped a year. Okay. Yeah, we have wagons along the along the line, so we've got plenty in service to leave. We have to sell in a handful of them, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. These bricks wagons are just going to sit there until our first new ship arrives. That could be a while yet, but that's okay. There's no real rush. We're not against the clock in any way, shape, or form on that. Can we have high speed track yet? I don't know what year it unlocks, you know. I guess it's 1920 ish, if I had to guess. How are you doing, sir? You're waiting for a path. Do we need a clearing signal here? I think so. We'll put a clearing signal and another block in there just to get things moving a little bit faster. Likewise, we'll do the same here as well. Do we need the same heading out? Where's our first? Yes. Let's go ahead and do that. They're not even, not even by a long shot. The guy must have been drunk when he installed them, i.e. me, I'm not. Okay, so, I think that's enough for this episode, and we'll call it quits here. We've got a new bit of infrastructure set up. Not sure how viable it is going to be, to be honest, but I wanted to try something a little bit different, so we went ahead and did it. We'll Obviously, when the trains start coming in in the future, it should make it that little bit more viable, but at least we will have bricks and food, if nothing else, going into Derby. So, what shall we... where shall we head to next? Perhaps connecting to Haywood for a passenger line isn't a bad idea. Now, we can no longer press straight forward through here, because Petersfield's expanded up this way. What we could do instead is branch off here and head this way towards Haywood and then have a loop in there as well. So we could have a service from Haywood to Petersfield if we so desire. The other option is to start running some tools up here to all of a stun and get some ships dropping across here. Or we could do both because neither of them should take us full episode to complete so maybe that's what we'll do actually although we may want to give this uh, give this line here a bit of time to bed in properly so we don't have as much backlog on the station how many do we have 41 I think 41 should be okay hopefully what's the demand like up here yeah now I think that you know now that we've got the food going into Derby and we've got that demand now feeding into the food factory and then by extension into the farm, we should start seeing increased output here, especially when we connect to Macclesfield as well with a delivery service. So yeah, I think 40 will do us. So yeah, as I said, I think that's a high time we call this an episode. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you're still enjoying the series as a whole. 
it's nice to be progressing and seeing more modern looking ish trains I say that you know i was born in 1987 this is 1917 so it's not that modern yet but compared to what we were running in the early game with the horse and cart you know what i mean so yeah if you have enjoyed it you know leave a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to the channel all that good stuff all that remains for me to say other than that guys is take care of yourselves it's tata for now